Roadhouse. Since I can't say it like Peter Griffin, I had to say it some other way. Uh, this is the 2024 remake of Roadhouse. Starring Jake Gyllenhaal. It's directed by Doug Lyman. Um, and it has audio description by Deluxe. Narrated by Roy Samuelson. Look at that. And uh, it's currently available on Amazon. And I'm available right now. And I, I want you to roundhouse kick. Not really. Please don't do that. You'll probably break your phone. Why don't you lightly tap that subscribe button instead? Be nice to your phone. Be gentle. It, it loves you. And uh, it's, it's it feels like it's an abusive relationship with you. And um, yeah. So uh, be nice to your phone. And click subscribe. Or your computer. Or your tablet. Whatever you're using. And let's talk about Roadhouse. Well, Doug Lyman is a very capable director. Uh, he's sort of an underrated director, but he is a capable director. He's the kind of director that pops up and you're like, oh yeah, that was good. Oh yeah, that was good too. But yet you're like, what did he do? <laughs> What's that film? What's he known for? Well, he's known mostly for the Bourne identity. He started the Jason Bourne craze before Paul Greengrass took it over and ran with it. Uh, but he also directed other films before that. He has Go is under his radar. So he can mix comedy. He can do some action. Um, and he does that here. He mixes comedy and action. There's a little bit of a problem with that because it seems like they're trying to do intentional humor. Unlike Roadhouse, which sort of... I think when it released in theaters, you just kind of went and saw Roadhouse and you didn't really know that you were watching a bad film or a cheesy film or a cult classic or a whatever, whatever you want to label it, you know, a, a good, bad flick, uh, the guilty pleasure, um, whatever it is, at the moment you don't know. Be, you take everything away opening weekend of that film you just walk in and you're like oh it's an action film because it's like everything else sort of from the 80s it's very similar to that vibe and it captures that time period very well and we look back on it later and we're like oh yeah it's of the time period it feels very 80s feels very like in the in its moment um here he doesn't what he should have done was try to capture the 2024 so that later on down the line, uh, this generation would have rediscovered Roadhouse, the remake, as being a very of-the-moment type film. You know, had a lot of, I don't know, like, uh, weird commentary that was specific to a certain time period, make it, like, all about COVID or... Uh, you know, like there's things that only happen in a small bubble of time. And then later on, you're like, wow, this film was really early 2020s, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Um, lean into that. Instead of just trying to make this film kind of like a little goofy sometimes with some one-liners thrown in. And he talks more than Patrick Swayze did in the original. Um, but it's it's got some kick-ass action. Everything I've read about this film says Jake Gyllenhaal did as many stunts as he possibly could do. They brought in a couple other people who I've recognized from other things, like Jessica Williams, who is in um, Shrinking on Apple+. Plus. Uh, we've got Danielle Melchior. We've got Conor McGregor. Uh, I think everybody knows who Conor McGregor is. I love that they put introducing Conor McGregor. I was like, wasn't he in one of the Creed movies? I know, I think he played himself, but I think he was in a Creed movie. Did I fever dream that? <laughs> He's in something. There's something where Conor McGregor, I think, plays himself for like a few seconds. Um, yeah, it's, uh, but I guess here because he's playing Knox. He's playing a, a, another character that is not, you know, that's not him. Um, <clears throat> anyway, so, yeah. It's just, this is a really odd film. It's, the, of course, the building is called The Roadhouse. 
because uh, hilarious. Um, this is set down in Key West. They've moved it down to Key West. The setting doesn't really it doesn't really mean anything for the film. It just is in a new place. I I want to address the fact that I've seen a lot of other critics say this film didn't need to be called the Roadhouse. They could have just called it something else. And like, yeah, but they wanted that that name recognition. I'm kind of, I'm like, I don't know, man. I don't know. Okay, so let's take let's take that person's route. Let's go let's go with critic A. Let's go their route and say, okay, so we'll take away Roadhouse and we'll call it I don't know, punch face. Uh so uh <laughs> face face punch sounds better. Face punch. Uh so the f new film's now called Face Punch. And uh people are they go and they watch Face Punch. They're like, oh, I'm a big fan of Jake Gyllenhaal. People are like, wow, this is oddly similar to the plot of Roadhouse. Did they just rip off Roadhouse? That becomes the conversation. So no, they can't actually just do that. Because the film is actually too similar to Roadhouse, where somebody's running a bar and they have to go hire somebody to come and kick all the... They, they would need to tweak the script way too much. And then still, you have to keep tweaking the script and tweaking it and tweaking it and tweaking it until finally it no longer resembles this and it is something completely different. And then maybe then you could get away with it, but still hiring somebody to come save your bar who's a badass might still draw the comparison. Just the basic concept, the basic need of this film, is the basic plot of Roadhouse. So by not acknowledging that, you're just going to draw up a whole bunch of people who are going to be like, this is a ripoff of Roadhouse. So actually, I think they did the right thing here because they called it Roadhouse. Uh, even if they had called it Punchface, they still should have left the bar called the Roadhouse so that that way, uh, you know, <laughs> it would have at least, they would have been acknowledging it like a, like a nod, like, a, oh, look, we're doing our own thing. Uh, but then it's weird because then why did you name the bar the Roadhouse when the film is not named Roadhouse? <laughs> well, it gets very nebulous. I don't mind the fact that the film is called Roadhouse. Um... It's just debatable as whether or not we need it or whether or not this is the best version of it. If you take it separately and you just go, okay, so this film didn't have to do anything exactly like the original. They just wanted to take the plot and they're just using it for 2024. That's how you should look at this film. Because if you try to compare it to the original, they changed way too much. There's no Sam Elliott character in here that wanders in halfway through the film and tells people that he's not going to show him his dick. That doesn't happen. Uh, this film is way toned down. It's 2024. We can't just have women walking around flashing their boobs all the time. It's just not going to happen. So that all that stuff is toned way down. Uh, it's a very different film. It has a very different tone. It's a very, you know, uh, safer, very much safe, a safer film for uh, for our generation. And, um, and Jake plays it completely differently than Patrick Swayze did. So, uh, just embrace it as its own thing, as an entity, and not like, uh, well, how well, how well did it remake that film? Well, it didn't really do that. It kind of just is Roadhouse, a different kind. Roadhouse, the new generation. Um, he does go, he does go to a bar. Um, he's not clear, he's not quite the legend that uh everyone else that Swayze is in the original where he's like known all over for being the world's greatest cooler here he's just kind of like this guy uh that and she's already run through a couple of them Jessica Williams plays the owner of the bar and uh she's already run through a couple and uh the the clientele just keep kicking them out and so he comes in and and uh, there's a scene where Doug Lyman makes sure that we know that basically he's got a death wish. I hate that stupid train on the track scene. I, it's so cliche. It's so terrible. And so many people get hit by trains. I'm just like, why do we keep putting this into films? Uh, it's, he puts himself on the track like he's like, all right, it's my time to be hit by a train. <laughs> get off the fucking track, man. <laughs> just get off. Go do something else. So, um, 
hated that scene. He finally gets down to the bar. Uh, when he, when we get into the action sequences, they're pretty good. Uh, when Conor McGregor comes into the film, um, he's, he's actually pretty good. Uh, it's not like a heavy acting role. He's basically playing like a boisterous version of himself that kicks butt. And uh, I gotta say he did a pretty good job. I didn't, I really did not. I think the character that he had could get a spinoff. There's a way that he enters and exits this thing that feels like that they're doing something for Knox, where uh, I wouldn't be surprised if Amazon was like, there's no way Jake Gyllenhaal's going to do a Roadhouse 2. But Conor McGregor might. <laughs> so, and I would be totally down for that version because his he is so unhinged and so off the wall in this film that I would love to see somebody hire him to go protect a bar. <laughs> That's the film I want to see. Is his character, who is nothing like Jake Gyllenhaal or Patrick Swayze's character, who himself destroys things, you know? I, I would love to see him be hired and be like, all right, dude, we'll pay you a lot of money, but you got to actually protect this bar, not destroy it. You know, <laughs> that's the film. That's that's the sweet spot right there. Um, but yeah, this film obviously has a plot. There's a building that's burned down just like there is in the original. Don't worry about that. That's there. Uh, everything is just kind of like moved to Key West. There's an, instead of there being like some weird mob boss in some small town, <laughs> like there is in the original one, there's just a developer who keeps hiring people because he wants land and he's trying to build things and build a resort and own, he wants to own the whole area and uh there's this weird story about this tree and uh that they keep bringing up that's down in key west um uh, fred fred the tree that just kind of grew someplace anyway um this is this is a fine film jake did most of his own stunts uh and he apparently looks great and really uh worked out for this film really beefed up uh buffed out whatever you want to say. The audio description here is uh, really solid. It's uh, going to be definitely one that I remember at the end of the year uh, because sort of that degree of difficulty. There's a lot of like really sort of crazy things that happen. There are a lot of crazy things that happen in this film in terms of um, like the fight sequences, uh, people just coming in and smashing things and uh, people grabbing somebody, flipping them over their back. Lots of description that had to go into fight choreography uh, so that you could understand what the what the stunt team is actually having to do in this film, um, as well as fighting out on boats and uh, just a whole bunch of different things like, like that. So it's it's a pretty uh, pretty solid film in terms of managing fight choreography. Uh, it does the most that it can. This is not John Wick. So the fight choreography is not just like off the chain. We don't have a John Wick this year. So Roadhouse may be the closest we get to it in terms of establishing a film with uh, a lot of hand-to-hand -hand combat and um, fight choreography like that. But uh, Corey does a really nice job. His voice fits this film really well. Tonally, he was the right choice for this um, because he's not... Uh, he's not taking a, a weird... I've been seeing a couple of things this year that are serious, and we were not hiring serious narrators. This is great because Roy's voice fits in sort of this middle spot where it's not like... It, his, his voice isn't going to depress the hell out of you because it's not that kind of film. But it works here. He works sort of like a William Michael Redmond where it works really well in action films. Um, and uh, it just sits right in the film. So um, I'm paying a lot more attention to like how we're using, how we're casting voices. And I think this one was cast appropriately. So yeah, Roadhouse, Amazon. It's mostly enjoyable. It's not the original, uh, but I don't think it, I don't know how hard it wants to be the original. It doesn't really seem to be. It seems to want to try to blaze its own trail um, and do something a little different. 
Uh, it does have some things that I really think are dumb. Uh, the band is playing through like everything. That band is like, man, they're going to earn their money. That band plays through fights. I have a band in this bar that's hidden behind chicken wire. And uh, there's like full on brawls going. And that band is still like, we're going to play. We're just going to keep playing. <laughs> Uh, it's, it's really, anyway, um, there's, there's some cheesy moments in this that maybe time will tell. Ten years from now, let's see how we look on Roundhouse. Although, we tend to forget streaming films. So that's the only concern that I have, is that it's possible that ten years from now, we may not even remember this film exists. So, uh, there's that. A lot of streaming films get forgotten. So... Maybe this will go away. Um, but for now, I was I was entertained, and I would love to see a Conor McGregor sequel. I want to see Roadhouse Two starring Conor McGregor. I do. And that is the film that I think would be really entertaining. Um, but I'm gonna give Roadhouse a B. Uh, yeah, I liked it. So, adding to the conversation. And thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, and I will see you guys on the other side.